on. Susan, now it's on. Start over. <laughs> Sorry. That's okay. It's my first camera job. Have you been in a meeting that just seems to go on and on and on without ever really getting to the point or one that ever, never even comes up with a plan? My goal here today is to give everyone some tips on how to hopefully survive and lead a successful individualized education plan. An individualized education plan is also known as an IEP. I'll be using that acronym throughout the speech as it is used during conversation more often than not. These meetings are usually led by the Exceptional Education Case Manager, but as many of you are entering the education field, an IEP meeting is something at the very least you may have to attend. I have attended several IEP meetings as a parent, as my own child who has special needs in mental retardation. I also received research this topic as I'm hoping to become an exceptional education teacher. I'll explain how to follow the guidelines for an IEP meeting as well as the importance of being prepared and knowing that time is extremely important. There are some specific guidelines that need to be followed while holding an IEP meeting. On March 1st of this year, while researching what constitutes an IEP meeting, I found a website from the U.S. Department of Education that lists the steps necessary and guides one through the process of implementing an IEP meeting. The website acknowledges that a team must meet and come to a consensus on what is appropriate for the individual child. The team consists of anyone who has direct knowledge of the child and his education. Teachers, therapists, for example, occupational therapists who help with fine motor skills such as handwriting, using scissors, and physical therapists who work on gross motor skills, walking, jumping, even pedaling, and speech therapists who work on articulation and language impairments, and of course, the parents. The U.S. Department of Education notes that these are stated as guidelines, but there are also local, state, and federal laws that must be followed. After reviewing some of the important guidelines, let's talk about some specific qualities needed. Being prepared has to be the most important aspect of leading a successful IEP meeting. On March 7th of this year, I interviewed a Ms. Shonda Keynes. She's an exceptional education teacher with Hamilton County Schools to get some real world advice on just how to lead a successful and productive IEP meeting. Ms. Keynes has stressed the importance of being prepared and organized. Her most important piece of advice was to always use an agenda. It is the best way to remain on topic. Also, have all necessary reports and documents and know where they are to locate in an instant. Have them placed in order of the agenda, but be familiar enough with them to be able to discuss them at any relevant time. Ms. Keynes also talked about the need to remain in control of your emotions. Very often, parents get emotional, and it can remain difficult to keep your own emotions in check. And I must admit, I was one of those emotional parents. It is extremely difficult to hear and admit that your child is having learning difficulties as well as any other difficulties or disabilities he may have. But as soon as you can accept the fact and know that the people in the room with you are there to help your child, it <coughs> does tend to get somewhat easier. It took me 18 years, but it did get a little easier. Ms. Keynes also spoke on the importance of always using factual statements and comment only on items and things that you have yourself seen firsthand. And remember, documentation is your friend. Lastly, though also very important, it's the need for time management. Everyone attending the meeting is aware of how important their own time is. On March 3rd of this year, I found an article from the website EffectiveMeetings.com that one of the best tips to keep in mind is that you must remember that time of everyone else is important. When dealing with many different professionals and parents, time is at an essence. You must also remember that these meetings take you out of your own classroom as well. Now on some days, that fact may want to make you drag the meeting out a little bit longer, <laughs> but I digress. <laughs> Although it is important for everyone to be able to have their say, you, as the leader of the meeting, must keep the information relevant as well as on schedule. Some parents and even other professionals like to go off on their tangents and tell stories or talk about unrelated issues. You must be able to rein them in and keep them and sometimes yourself on track. And be realistic with your time frame. If you know this is a meeting where many different professionals, such as the OT therapist or a PT, as well as a school psychologist even, may have to report, 
realistically, you may need to schedule at least two hours, sometimes more, for this type of meeting. Even if you have scheduled more time than was actually needed, if the meeting is technically finished, let it be finished. Don't drag it out just to fill up your scheduled time. Which leads me to my conclusion. Today I explained how to follow the guidelines for an IEP meeting as well as the importance of being prepared and knowing and keeping these meetings on a specific time frame. So the next time you're faced with leading a meeting, <coughs> you will know a few of the important steps for it to be a successful meeting. I cannot promise you that every meeting you lead or even every meeting that you attend will be done successfully, but if some of these steps are implemented, you'll be well on your way. Thank you very much. I had to pan the whole class. <laughs>